Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this lunchtime empire builder, how do you become a millionaire CEO? Quite often from young entrepreneurs, we're getting asked, how did you make this happen? Everybody has all this fluff out there and all these different things about how to make money and quick schemes or whatever, but they really wanna know from a factual person, how did we make it happen? And I'm gonna go back to actually when I was growing up, because I'm gonna give you a story about when I hated to read. I despised reading. I would do everything I possibly could not to read, okay? Call it a guy thing, call it a sports thing, whatever it was. But I even took it to the level of having, if you remember back in the day, we used to have cliff notes. I don't even know if they still have these, probably don't, but there's probably an electronic version. But with cliff notes, I would have a collection of the cliff notes so I didn't have to read the books just so I could be prepared for the tests or the papers. And no, I did not copy or plagiarize because I'm sure that would be your next question. But, um, but also, I would go to class and I would just take in one of those little recorders. Remember the little re cassette recorders? I mean, obviously my kids don't have a clue what I'm talking about, but um, you would take it in, you'd hit the button and play record, and it would get everything the professor or the instructor was teaching. So but when I went back home, I could listen to the actual class. So this is what spurred me on um, to being, I'm gonna call it more successful later on because I realized I was cutting corners and cutting corners does not get it done. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me on this Empire Builder. I really appreciate your time. But today I'm gonna get right to the point right to the point of how, through experience and through great successful people that I've been around, you could become the millionaire CEO you wanted to become. First, it starts with knowledge. And I don't mean just general knowledge. I mean focused, specialized knowledge when you are trying to accomplish something. I mean, block out the distractions. Okay, if you could take your knowledge to the next level, okay, what it will do is it improves your chance of success, okay? Basically, percentage wise, the more you know about something, when you go to analyze it, the better you're gonna be at saying if it's gonna be successful or a failure. Because we don't succeed every single time we launch a program or a product or a business, okay? You have to learn from books. Podcasts. These are things that I've learned through um, all these mediums through the years. Mastermind groups. They've been extremely helpful. Surrounding yourself with a great group of CEOs that are trying to do the same things or have done it. Groups that are led by people that have taken you there. You know, do you want to learn how to become a millionaire from someone who doesn't have fifty grand in the bank account, or do you want to learn how to become a millionaire from someone that has? 10 million or 20 million or 50 million or 100 million, okay? So you have to look at it in that way. You have to surround yourself with credible people. And I mean people that know the industry that you are trying to actually get things done in, okay? I don't mean they just kind of know it and they've never even started a brick and mortar business, but you're opening a brick and mortar business, okay? There's a lot of these people out there, so you want to be very specific about where you're getting your knowledge from, from your books, from your events, your, your masterminds, the people around you, okay? Because there is truth to the point of that everybody has an opinion, and you know what they're like, right? But opinion of who? Who has the experience? Because experience in going through something, in my opinion, trumps any other type of knowledge, okay? Including when you learn in school and it's just taught on a computer, a laptop, or a blackboard, whiteboard, whatever they use these days, okay? And the biggest important thing from knowledge is the more you know about an area, the more comfortable, the more you can specialize in it, the more confidence you build. And by taking that confidence, what it does, it takes you to step two. And step two is making a decision. And I don't mean verbally just saying, I'm gonna make a decision to do this, because talk is cheap. Anybody can talk. But who has proved that you can get things done, okay? Get things done 
by actually weighing out the pros and cons. And I make lists, and it sounds kind of silly, but I'll make a positive list and a negative list as I'm going through all of my knowledge, everybody I've talked to. And I will look at that list and then base my decision based on that, on if I'm gonna be successful, on whether I should invest in a project, or if we should launch something for our clients, okay? And you need to bounce your list off of your accountability partner, whether you have a coach or a mentor, whether it's your wife or your husband, whoever it is, you need to say it out loud to someone else. Not as much for them to give you their viewpoint, because they might not be as expert in that field, but they are gonna keep you accountable. And when you hear yourself say something, I'm gonna tell you, you look at it in a different light. Okay, because they say, first you gain the knowledge, then you teach the knowledge, then you share the knowledge. Like, that's, there's truth to that also, okay? So that leads me to step three, because I know you're busy during this lunchtime, and it is to take massive action, okay? So first you gain the knowledge, then you weigh, weigh the pros and cons, and you make the decision. But we make lots of decisions, okay? I have joined many gyms and I have canceled many gym memberships, okay? But it's about the actions you take and you need to lay out a plan because if you do not have a plan that you could take action on, your business will fail and you will not accomplish the millionaire level or the multi-millionaire level because you need to have more than a million at this point, okay? With the way of inflation and economy is, you need to have 10 million at least, okay? So that's maybe your bigger goal. But think about it this way. I am not a step-by-step -step micro planner because so many things change in the course of a business that are going to veer you left, right, up, or down. So I like to plan it in stages. I know where we're going with things, okay? And where I want to be. And I look at it in different stages on how I could get there. But I cannot micro plan because so many things are thrown at us. It throws your plan in haywire then you're all stressed out because your line items are not going in the direction you want. That will get you frustrated. So those are my three points to helping you become the CEO millionaire that you are all capable of accomplishing, okay? Please share this out or tag someone you think might benefit from this video, okay? Because I really appreciate all your shares and your comments. And I have to announce two winners from our last Empire Builder that commented and shared it out the most and we put it into a raffle. Marianne Egan of Massachusetts and Brian Hess of the Pavement Group in Pennsylvania. I appreciate your guys' comments and shares and we're gonna be contacting you to get your shirt sizes to send you an uppercut shirt. I want you guys to have a great one. Keep working hard, go build your empire and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.